you ever feel like you're stuck in a rut and no matter what you do, nothing seems to change? Well, what if I told you that the key to changing your future is within you? That's what we're going to talk about today on Awakening with Amy. Welcome. I'm Amy Valentine. I'm a certified life coach hoping to awaken within you a mindset that you can be, do, and have any desire. And today we're going to talk about the key thing that opens up your future, gets out, gets you out of that rut, gets you out of that old way of thinking and in to your future. So what is that key? Well, it's your self-concept. That's why it's within you. How you see yourself is key to everything because you are not separate from any experience in your life. Even though sometimes it does seem that way. This is a Neville Goddard teaching. He says that your self-concept is everything. You can, he's like, you can lay aside any other process, you know, to get you what you want, except only focus on your self-concept. And he said, it'll open the door to everything that you want. So he says, a change of the concept of self automatically alters your future. So what's he talking about? Well, first, our self-concept, what it is, is who you think you are in relationship to everybody else and everything else. And it's often, you know, we're unaware of it, right? Because we, we don't often go within and think of that. We think that we're just a victim to the outer world. But what Neville's saying is, no, that one and only reality is in your consciousness. It's within you. And your self-concept is part of consciousness, meaning what you're awake to, what you're aware of being, who you think you are in relationship to the world is your self-concept. So if a change happens within you, within your consciousness, then the outer world must mirror back to you what that change is. The assumptions you hold, what you believe to be true about yourself and the world is how you decide to act, right? It's who you think you are. It's the decisions you make. It's maybe what you decide to do or not to do. So how you see yourself is everything and a change in it will change your outer world. Instead of us, what we normally do is we have this habit of only seeing with our five senses, right? We, we don't use our sixth sense, which is our intuition. Our intuition is that invisible part of us that guides us to everything that we want, right? And you know, what is the catalyst for any change in our lives? The true catalyst for everything is desire. That is why you don't want to push away your desires by, you know, not liking your current circumstances. When you, when you have your focus and your attention on what you don't want, what you don't like by trying to fix it, by trying to avoid it, run away from it, or complain about it. What are you doing? You're using your imagination, your consciousness to focus on what you don't want. And you can't get what you do want when all your focus and attention is on the problem. So it, the whole key is coming from a place of allowing. Allow that desire to 
unfold within you. Allow the desire your attention by focusing on fulfillment. What would I be doing? What would I be feeling if my desire were already a reality? That is coming from a self concept of fulfillment. And that's what Neville says, always go to the end. What is the end? The end is always fulfillment. It's a happy ending, not an unhappy ending. So when we focus on our fulfillment with our imagination, with our intuition, by feeling that state of fulfillment within, then that outer circumstances will shift and harmonize with our new self concept. Because when you have that habit, of only seeing what your five senses can see, it renders you blind to what otherwise could be. And this is the key. It's like it opens up a portal when you just disregard what you're living. Let me give you an example. So I have a client and it's an email coaching situation. We we often email, he emails me things and I respond to him. So the other day, He sent me an email and this is what he said. I'm kind of paraphrasing, but he said that, you know, things are are just still moving sideways in my life. He's like, when they settle down, hopefully I can send you some good news, right? So I thought about that and I'm like, all right, well, his self-concept right there is down in the dumps, you know, when things settle down. So he's dictating who he is by the current circumstances. And I knew what his current circumstances is, but I didn't focus on that. So my response was, I said to him, sorry to hear that, but instead of waiting things for things to get better, so why don't you craft an email telling me how everything is now going your way? So he read it, he opened it, and he wrote back to me within like five, 10 minutes. And he wrote, okay, fine. He's like, my leg no longer hurts. It's all healed up. My car is fixed. I'm happy at my job and everything is going my way. Okay. So I wrote back to him. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you. You deserve it. That was it. So within 30 minutes, He writes me back and says, oh my God, you're not going to believe this. I have great news. My car is not going to cost as much as I thought. It's going to get fixed. And so instead of riding my bike to work, I am now going to be able to drive. He's like, "I I can't believe this. So what happened? Basically what happened was because I didn't respond to his like, you know, oh, my life is going sideways. I didn't try to fix it. I I didn't try to give him advice. All I said was, tell me how you want it to be, as if it were already true. And that energy somehow, I don't know exactly how this works, but that energy somehow, he picked up on that. He acted on it. And then within a half an hour, he got good news. So (laughs) withdraw, what is the moral of this story? Withdraw your attention from the problem. His problem was he's been riding his, his mountain bike to work, right? And he's kind of frustrated, you know, he's was, was in that rut of seeing himself as, oh my God, I can't believe I can't get my car fixed. I don't have enough money, that kind of thing. And it was like, He turned away just long enough to tap into what it would feel like just in writing an email. And that's how you do it. That's what Neville says. Create a simple scene that would imply your fulfillment, imply that your present dream is a future fact, that it's already here right now. So you do that by changing your consciousness, changing your concept of yourself. You shape your imagination in harmony with a person, a self-concept that can be, do, and have whatever 
you desire. And it's not about working hard. It's about disciplining your mind, not discipline, working hard and efforting. No, the frequency at which you return to your fulfillment in your imagination. And you do that by focusing on what you want and why you want it. What you want is, is that is desire. That is the catalyst for your expansion, for you up leveling your life, right? And the why is always to feel good, to feel satisfied and fulfilled. And your higher self, your God self will show you the way you will just, if you allow yourself to follow those urges, now you're coming from a self-concept, the high, like your, the higher you has of you, that you are already full, you're already complete, you're already worthy of everything. And a desire is just a way for you to expand and experience new things in this life. So just to recap, again, I think I said it a thousand times in this email, but your self-concept is the only thing you need to change. You, the consciousness you have of yourself. You change that to be in alignment with worthiness and fulfillment and disregard what the outer world says, then that outer world will remold itself to reflect your new concept of yourself. So thank you so much for being here and thank you to all the new subscribers. I'm gonna name a few. Thank you, Joe Lewis. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Yolanda. Thank you, Empress Babs. And thank you, Lynn Halterman. I'm so happy you're here. Thank you for growing with me. We're in this together. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting and sharing the video to get out to more people so we can spread this message of empowerment. Take care.